All the way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living Good morning and welcome to the Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Clint Davis, your host. 1 Samuel chapter 8, beginning in verse 10, Samuel warns Israel about the king. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking for a king from him. He said, these will be the days of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and be to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and the sum to plow the ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of their grain and of your vineyards and give them to his officers and to his servants. He will take your male servants and your female servants and the best of your young men and your donkeys and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and they said, No, but there shall be a king over us that we may also be like the nations that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And when Samuel had heard all these words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Obey their voice and make them a king. Samuel then said to the men of Israel, Go every man to his own city. So Israel demands a king. They want to be like every other nation. That's the key phrase here, I think, in the end of chapter 8. The people said no after they were warned by Samuel. They said no, there shall be a king over us so that we may also be like all the other nations that our king may judge us and go before us and fight our battles. That's verses 19 and 20 of 1 Samuel chapter 8. The people of God, the Israelites, decided they wanted to be like every other nation. Now a common theme throughout the history of God's people to this point and will continue to be a theme throughout the history of God's people until the coming of Christ and even into the modern era uh, to some degree and even till the return of Jesus Christ is the propensity that we have as God's people to want to go after other gods, to want to be like everyone else, to want to assimilate into the world, to be like our neighboring nations, to be like those who live around us and live among us. Jesus prays in his high priestly prayer in John chapter 17 that we not be those who are given over to being like the world, but rather we be in the world, but not of the world. And when Jesus prays that prayer, he prays that we will be like a boat, in the words of Thomas Boston, like a boat sitting in the water. The problem is not with the boat. The problem is not with the water. The problem is when the boat begins to take on water and becomes like the water and eventually will sink and there will be a dis dissolution of the boat, a dissolution of the safety of the people in the boat. And so what we have here is Israel saying, we want to be like every other nation around us. We want to be like them. We want to have kings to judge over us. We want to have kings to rule over us. We want to have kings to go out before us. We want to have kings to fight our battles. We want to have someone to lead us. Remember yesterday, the people had gotten tired of the cycle. They knew something needed to change, but the problem was is that they were had rejected God as their God. Uh, they had ceased to be moral and live in light of his moral responsibilities and his moral commands on their lives. And as such, they began to fall into chaos and they were dealing with the consequences of their sins. They wanted to fix that problem, but their solution was earthly. Their solution was to go and be like everyone else. And God says to Samuel, listen, you can give them a king, but warn them. Make sure they understand what they're getting themselves into. They're giving up their liberty. They're giving up their freedom. 
Right now, they had freedom to do what they will. They had freedom to follow God. They had freedom to live their lives the way that they wanted to live their lives. There was no external coercion on their lives. When they bring a king in, the king will bring coercion into their lives. The king will indeed begin to force them into certain behaviors. And I think that's important for us to understand as we think about what's going on here in this time period, but also in our world, we as God's people want to live lives of freedom. When we give over the leadership of our lives and we submit it to other men and other um, structures and systems of government, we give up a certain level of freedom. And when we give up that freedom and that liberty, we will then be forced to conform to the wills, the demands, the, the, the whims of those who are over us. And so what God says to his people through Samuel is, you're going to give that up. You're going to, he's going to take your children. He's going to appoint commanders of thousands of commanders. He's going to take your food. He's going to take what you have to fund his military machine, to fund his administrative machine, to fund his bureaucratic offices. Know what you're getting yourself into. And God does that sometimes in our lives. Okay, I'll give you what you want. You prob- it's not going to be good for you, but you need to understand what you're getting yourselves into. There's a sense in which God is saying, are you really sure this is what you want? But yet they say, yes, it is what we want. They want to be like everybody else. Their solution to their problem is to look around them and see what everybody else is doing and then apply that to their own lives in order to um, find their best solution. We've got to be careful with that. We've been called to live in freedom to the glory of God. May we learn to live in that way and trust the Lord who is our King. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. You carry me close to your heart And surely your goodness and mercy will find